So here's a pretty interesting looking output. It's got that little uh, ring on there. It's about uh, 16 volts and it's about 2.88 megahertz, something like that. But yeah, tuning around with that. Every now and then, it's kind of hard to see the uh, output sits real still, and it starts to look like your uh, normal plasma flame, sort of. I don't know, it's weird. Of course, the frequency isn't high enough for it to do that. It just, just happens to be uh, what it looks like. I'll put it at 20 volts. You can see the uh, streamer start to sort of or more there yeah it's kind of a cool way to do it where uh kind of let the flame dance around the ring there if it gets too hot in one particular spot it'll just move I guess but uh won't annihilate breakout point. Of course, I don't know if it'll break out on its own like that. Let me see. Nah. I almost wanted to. Bring it to uh, 26. Kind of adjusting the frequency around. That's what it looks like now when I play with the tuning. Twenty six. If I can bring it up to about thirty. Yeah, you actually hear it starts to fry that uh little ring there, so you hear a lot more noise. Even though the output's still relatively clean there. Actually, if I come out the outer ring, it's a whole lot quieter. Whoops. shunt caps I was using with these guys the one nanofarad Wemas zoom in so these guys are actually MKPs the reason I did that was because the original shunt caps I had using little MCCs comes in tiny little packages these guys I had burned it out but I kind of thought that would happen because the way I soldered them kind of stacking them and I was real dirty with it because they're so tiny I was just like I don't even know if this is gonna work uh, but eventually that crapped out so I temporarily used these guys in the process I had to add a whole bunch of extra gate capacitance that I didn't initially have so I brought this thing back to pretty much exactly how I had it before same shunt which is down there so basically with all that extra gate capacitance what I ended up with was a uh, me playing around until I got to the point where I didn't have a whole bunch of gate ringing. What that did was brought the consumption up to about 220 milliamps, whereas now about as high as it goes is about 160. So when I run this, 
get it tuned a little better. So now with the current setup, see I've got about a 22 nanosecond rise time. And that just happens to be what it shifts into when it's uh, actually oscillating. When the secondary is oscillating. And uh, it's just the random tuning I've got with it now. But it's just kind of interesting. Cut it up a little bit more. It was one of those things where um, I started to really worry about this gate ring in here to where once I started to get up to about 35, you know, 40 volts, it's getting real bad. So I just kept kind of adding more capacitance. I don't know, what I ended up with wasn't too bad, but the switching didn't quite look as nice, right? So now that I've gone back to this setup, probably like that better using those real tiny caps and uh, keeping the extra gate capacitance down because basically the way I had it before was probably right on the edge to where I needed this heat sink on the gate driver the uh, linear regulator was getting real hot still the hottest thing that goes on this kind of circuit is the uh, primary but the way this runs at about a uh, 32 volt something like that it's not bad Fucking uh, again, tune around with the frequency. So pull some uh, pretty decent arcs there. Cut up a little more. about 40 so yeah I mean it tunes roughly the same or the or outputs roughly the same but like right now for example I've actually got the primary as low as I can bring it so could be pushing more power than that that's not bad so smaller heat sink I changed the heat sink out to a smaller one just to get the form factor down and I uh, added some caps down here and that's about it so it's a pretty good deal Probably how I'd finalize it, I suppose. 